Hello and welcome to my class. In this video, I am going to discuss the salient features and examples of order Isoptera or the order of termites. Earlier, all termites were classified under order Isoptera. But after careful consideration of their characters and reviewing their similarities with cockroaches, they are now in recent literature classified under order Blatodia and infra-order Isoptera. The classic entomology books still have termites under order Isoptera. So, I am going to discuss it as under order Isoptera, but you should know that in modern literature, termites are classified under order Blatodia and infra-order Isoptera. Now, all termites are eusocial. When group living organisms show these three characters, they are known as eusocial. The first character is overlap of generations, which means that more than one reproductive generation should live together in the group. Then there should be cooperative brood care. They should take care of their brood or their offspring and in a cooperative manner. Different individuals should perform different colony maintenance activities so that they can take care of the brood in an efficient manner. They should also show reproductive caste differentiation wherein one or a few individuals would reproduce or lay eggs while the majority of the individuals would refrain temporarily or permanently from reproduction and they would help the reproductives in laying eggs and they would take care of these reproductives eggs. Now all termites are eusocial and eusociality is found not only among termites but also in order Hymenoptera among the ants, bees and wasps. But all species under order Hymenoptera are not social. You can also find solitary and parasitic species in order Hymenoptera, whereas all termites are social. Now, termites or the order Isoptera can be classified into three into two groups. First one is the lower termites, and the second group is the higher termites. The lower termites have four major families, family Mastotermitidae, family Calotermitidae, family Hodotermitidae and family Rhinotermitidae. Higher termites include only one family which is family Termitidae. The difference between the lower termites and the higher termites is in their capability of digesting wood. The higher termites show a better capability of digesting wood and they do not have any symbiotic relationship with any protist in their gut. The lower termites who are not as efficient in digesting wood, they take help from the protists that live symbiotically in their gut. Also, lower termites do not construct any nest. They can make galleries or complex series of tunnels, but they do not make a mound. Here, higher termites make gigantic mounds or termitaria. As I said that they are classified into five major families. The first family is family Mastotermitidae, which includes only one living species which is known as Mastotermis darwiniensis. Family Mastotermitidae is a primitive group of insects and it is well represented in fossil records. So, we know that there were more species under family Mastotermitidae, but now there is only one living species. Their tarsi or the segment of the leg is five segmented and their hind wings have well developed anal lobes and they lay their eggs in patches. See all these three characters are very similar with cockroaches and that's why they all the termites are now classified under order Blatodia with the cockroaches. The other three families under the primitive group are not as similar with the cockroaches because they show the tarsi which are either four segmented 
all imperfectly fine segmented and they do not have the inner lobe in their hind wings and also they do not lay their eggs in patches. So let's look into their characters. Family Calotermitidae are wood dwelling termites and they do not have workers but they have pseudogates. The difference between workers is that workers cannot become the reproductives or soldiers anymore. But the pseudergates or the pseudo workers can, if the situation arises, can become the reproductives. Okay, so that is the difference between the workers and pseudergates. All the other families have the workers, but family Calotermitidae, they do not have the workers. They have pseudergates. So they have the plasticity to become something else later. In family Calotermitidae, the pronotum is flat and broader than head. And in family Hodotermitidae, the uh, pronotum is narrower than head. So here the pronotum is broader than head. Here pronotum is narrower than head. I hope you remember what is pronotum. Pronotum is the dorsal targum of the prothorax. Okay. All right. Now this one is wood dwelling. This one is also wood dwelling. Okay. And all of them do not have the inner lobe in hind wings. Here the Tarsi is imperfectly five segmented, which means that the second segment of the tarsi is reduced. That's why they are known as imperfectly five segmented. In family Rhinotermitidae, we have genus like Rhinotermis, Reticulotermis, Coptotermis, etc. And these are all subterranean termites. Their pronotum in workers as well as in soldiers are flattened and wings are often reticulate and these are also without inner lobe in hind wings. So we have four families under the primitive category or among the lower termites, family Mastotermitidae, family Calotermitidae, family Hodotermitidae and family Rhinotermitidae. Family Mastotermitidae has only one living species. But this species shows the maximum similarity with cockroaches and that's why all termites are now classified under order Glatodia. Family Calotermitidae, family Hodotermitidae, these two are wood dwelling and family Rhinotermitidae is subterranean. Okay, now let's go into the higher termites. There is only one family, family Termitidae among the higher termites and it includes eight subfamilies, okay. These termites are ground dwelling and they, their pronotum in workers and soldiers are narrow with a raised median anterior lobe. Now, among these eight subfamilies, which are Epicotermitinae, Cubitermitinae, Foraminitermitinae, Macrotermitinae, Nasotitermitinae, Spherotermitinae, Syntermitinae and Termitinae, this Macrotermitinae is special because all of them feed on wood and other such organic material but Macrotermitinae, they also collect wood but they use that wood and other such organic material to make a garden where they cultivate Termitomyces fungi and that fungus is used as food for all the members of the colony. So here is a colony of, is a part of a colony of Odontotermis, which is a higher termite belonging to subfamily Macrotermitini. Here is the garden of the fun fungus and these white things are the fungus. Okay, so these ball-like structures are the fungus and the termites who are here, they take care of the fungus and they feed on that fungus. So this is made with wood and other such organic material and these white balls are the cultivar fungus. Let's look into the characters of a worker termite. 
the first thing that you see here is that the head is lobe like flattened lobe like the antennae look like a string of beads that's why they are known as moniliform antennae the head is prognathous type which means that the mouth parts are extended forward and do you see any eyes here they do not have eyes when they are workers and soldiers or they have very reduced vestigial eyes only in the reproductives you would find the eyes here you can see the thorax the abdomen and look at the legs their coxae are quite muscular and well developed so let's look into their characters properly the head is prognathous oval to rounded sometimes enlarged as in the soldiers i'll show you a picture very soon and with moderately well developed sutures and bearing a pair of moniliform antennae made of 9 to 30 segments this number of segments in the moniliform antennae can differ from species to species or individuals to individuals under the same species the compound eyes are well developed in winged forms but they are either reduced or absent in workers and soldiers the mandibulate mouth parts are typically orthoptera-oid in makeup you can see my video on order orthoptera where i had shown you the pictures and discussed the characters of the mouth parts you might remember that their lacinia was fork like here also you can see that in the maxilla the lacinia is fork like okay and they are dented in structure the gallia is hood like and the maxillary pulp is five segmented they have a neck which is characterized by presence of cervical sclerites and also i want to mention about the mandibles which can acquire a variety of size and shape in soldiers of different species in workers they are moderate in size but in soldiers they can acquire different shapes and sizes let's look into the characters of the thorax in thorax the targa are well developed the pronotum or the dorsal targum of the prothorax shows many taxonomically important variations in shape and it may be flat and shield like or heart shaped or laterally lobed or saddle shaped the meso and metanota are subequal and less variable so most uh, variation is shown in the pronotum not in meso and metanota on the ventral side the prosternum or the sternum of the prothorax is reduced and the meso and metasternum is smaller and v shaped the legs are similar to each other there isn't much difference in the fore legs mid legs and hind legs and the coxae are large and broad coxae is the segment of the leg that attaches it to the thorax the tibia are long and slender and tarsi are typically four segmented but in archeotermopsis zootermopsis and hodotermopsis the second tarsal segment is reduced so it is known as five imperfectly segmented okay now let's look into the wings only the reproductives have the wings and they needed for forming the swarm they come out from their colonies with the help of these wings they fly and they find their mate they fall down in the ground and they couple they go together and they shed their wings when they dig a small hole into the ground and go inside it after that they would mate and would start reproducing so the wings are the characters of the reproductives okay so let's look into the character of the wings the two pairs of wings are essentially similar in size form and venation earlier we have studied the wing structure of order odonata order orthoptera order hemiptera and there you have seen that the fore wing and the hind wing have many dissimilarities but here the fore wing and the hind wing are essentially similar in all aspects 
and that's what gives them the name isoptera or same type of wings. The wings are membranous as you can see in the picture and they are characteristic of sexually mature males and females. The workers and soldiers in the colony, they do not have the wings. The veins of the basal part are more sclerotized or thicker in chitin and the cross veins are absent. In primitive isoptera, the costa is absent. Costa is the vein that runs along the margin here. While in highly evolved species, it is great, um, greatly thickened. So, costa in primitive isoptera would be absent, but in highly evolved species, it would be greatly thickened. The subcosta or the next vein may be two branched. Next branch is radius. Radius may be a single vein or it may be recognized as separate branches like R to R5. Then next two veins are median and cubitus. These are well developed and the wings have a basal line of weakness that is required because these wings are shed after the swarm. After the reproductives come out, they fly and they drop on the soil together with their bed. They both shed their wings. Okay. So, for that, they have a basal line of weakness along which the wings are shed. Let's look into the abdomen. There are 10 segments in the abdomen. The targets of 10 and 11th segment are always fused, are often fused. The sternum of the 11th segment is represented by a pair of paraprops bearing the sarsi as in the blattids or cockroaches. The sternum of the first segment is reduced. In males, all sterna are entire. That means that you can see them clearly except the ninth. While in females, the seventh sternum forms the subgenital plate. The sarsi have variable number of segments. Small styli or small appendage may also be present on the ninth sternum. The ovipositor is reduced in females and the phallic organs of the males are also greatly reduced or suppressed. And in few species, there is a small penis but paramares are always absent. So, paramares are external genital organs and they are always absent in termites. Let's look into the life cycle of the termites. Most solitary insects have a typical line along which the life cycle flows. In exopterygote insects, the stages are egg La, uh, nymph and the adult. The adult again lays eggs, that egg hatches into nymph and nymph becomes adult. In case of endopterygote insects, the egg hatches into larva, larva becomes pupa, pupa becomes adult and that adult again lays eggs. But here as you can see, the life cycle is not as simple as egg, nymph and adult. Here, the life cycle starts with these allied reproductives or the winged reproductives. After they have found each other, they shed their wings and they become the de-allied reproductives. They mate and they start laying eggs. Now, you can see that the male remains the same, but the females in higher termites can attain a huge size. Their abdomen can become really large and this abdomen would then be full with ovary and fat bodies. So, the females only in higher termites, please remember that in primitive termites you would not find such a huge female. Only in higher termites they can become, they can attain a very big big size and their abdomen can extend. The head and thorax remains the same but the abdomen becomes bigger. Now after mating this female starts laying eggs. These eggs hatch into nymphs. The nymphs here as you can see they are small then they become bigger. Now this bigger nymph have many ways to go. It can 
either become the reproductive nymph which will develop the wings and it will become the primary reproductives or the allied reproductives or it can become the soldier where their head will become extended, will become enlarged, their mandibles will become larger and they will help in the protection of the colony or they can become the soldier workers where their head size will not be as big, their mandibles will remain small and they will perform functions like bringing food, cleaning the nest, feeding the brood, uh, building the nest, etc. So either they, the nymph will become the reproductive where its main function will be mating and then continuing the family or it will become the soldier where its function is protection of the colony or it will become the worker where it will help in building or cleaning the nest, feeding the brood, etc. Or else the nymph can also become supplementary reproductives. These supplementary reproductives are formed when the primary reproductives die. So if colony loses the primary reproductives, then the nymphs can become the supplementary reproductives which can again couple and start laying eggs and these eggs would have the similar fate. So once we understand this life cycle, let's look into the different termite castes. The termites are divided into the reproductive caste or the sterile caste. The reproductive caste is again divided into two types. The primary reproductives where the nymphs develop their wings and they become the reproductives. They go out from the colony and through a swarm they find their mate. They start a new colony. Those are the primary reproductives. And there are the secondary or supplementary reproductives who are formed inside the colony and who do not have wings, who do not go out of the colony to start a new colony. These are the reproductives which lay eggs in the same colony. Both primary reproductives and secondary reproductives will have male and female and they are known as king and queen. Both these groups will have this king and queen. Now, in the sterile caste, there are two types. One is the workers who, as I said before, will do all the colony maintenance activities and there are soldiers who will perform the colony protection activities. So, let's look here. We can see that the female of the reproductive caste in higher termites can uh, attain a huge size, okay, and in uh, the male remains more or less the same. And here in sterile caste, they can become the worker or they can become the soldier. Please notice the difference in the head and the mandibles of the worker and the soldier. Now, let's look into the characters of the primary reproductive. These are the adults with two pairs of large membranous wings. They have sclerotized dark colored bodies and with well-developed compound eyes and ocelli. So, you would remember that workers and soldiers do not have the compound eyes or the ocelli. They come out of their nest in large numbers, which is known as the swarm. And after a brief aerial existence, a male and a female couple and they shed their wings. After fertilization, the females of primitive genera do not undergo any change. But in family termitidae, the queen attains enormous post-metamorphic size change. Post-metamorphic basically means that they have gone through their regular uh, incomplete metamorphosis through which they have become from egg to nymph to adult. But even after becoming the adult, after their metamorphosis is incompletely finished, they can then attain a bigger size. Okay, This obesity is known as 
physogastry. These are the supplementary reproductives. You can see that in primary reproductives, the females become big. But in supplementary reproductives, they can either be apterous or brachypterous. That means either they won't have any wings or they will have smaller wings. Okay. And they will have little sclerotization, not as much as the primary uh, reproductives. So, primary reproductives would look much darker in color and they would look lighter in color. They are poorly developed or reduced eyes and ocelli. Okay. So, they do not either have any wings and they do, do not have any eyes and ocelli or they have poorly developed reduced eyes and ocelli. They are produced as replacement for the primary reproductive. When the primary reproductives die, then these supplementary reproductives are formed in the colony. They are also known as secondary reproductives. In a very interesting paper in 2014, Yashiro, Yashiro and Matsuhara have shown that termite queens use sexual reproduction to produce the uh, regular workers and soldiers. But when it comes to producing the supplementary reproductives, they actually use parthenogenesis to form the next set of reproductives. So, in that way, you can see that the female is ensuring that 100% of their genes or rather 50% of their genes are only multiplied into the secondary reproductives and that is only propagated. So, males sperms are used for uh, producing the workers and soldiers but when it comes to producing the supplementary reproductives, the termite queen closes the sperm gates of eggs to switch from sexual to asexual reproduction. So, it does not let the eggs fertilize with the sperm of the male and it makes sure that only her genes are propagated through the secondary reproductives. Okay. Now, Workers are absent in mastotermis and calotermitidae, right? I have already shown you that there we have pseudergates. They do not have the real workers. So, those are the nymphal stages or pseudergates who perform the colony maintenance activity, activities. And when the time comes, they can become the reproductives. They are usually pale in color with slight sclerotized cuticle. The workers are genetically either male or female, but their external sexual characters are hardly perceptible. The head is relatively wider than the reproductives, but not as large as the soldiers. Compound eyes are well developed in hodotermitidae that forage above ground in the daylight but otherwise they are either vestigial or absent. In some species, the workers can be also dimorphic. There can be larger workers for certain kind of work and smaller workers for certain other kind of works. In some species, the males form the larger workers and the females form the smaller workers. That is also seen. So, the regular workers are sclerotized, but if we have the pseudergates, then they are very little sclerotized. Okay. So, in a colony, if you remember the colony video that I showed you, in that there are some white individuals and there are some brown individuals. Those brown ones are well sclerotized workers who have become the workers and the white individuals are the nymphs who can further become either worker or soldier or reproductives. Now, the soldiers who have the enlarged head and extended mandibles, they can also be structurally specialized and they can be of different types. So, soldiers are structurally most specialized members of the colony. And their occurrence in all genera suggests that they are the primitive sterile caste. 
Why so? Because the soldiers are never going to reproduce. And their presence in all species show that there was an evolution of a sterile caste in the termites. The workers, as you remember, can be pseudergates, they can become the reproductives or they can remain as workers. But soldiers can never become the reproductives, right? So they are considered as the primitive sterile caste. They have large, strongly sclerotized heads and there are four types of soldiers found. Mandibulate soldiers, nasute soldiers, nasutoid soldiers and phragmotic soldiers. Let's look into their characters. These are the mandibulate soldiers. Here they have large and powerful mandibles that may assume striking or grotesque shapes. The head as usual is very enlarged, much bigger than the workers heads and see how well sclerotized the work soldier is. Let's look into the second type of soldier which is known as the nasute soldiers. In this the so in these soldiers the mandibles are vestigial. Here you can see very clear mandibles but in nasutes you won't see these mandibles. They are vestigial but there is a long median frontal nasus or rostrum. This is their rostrum. Okay. And this rostrum has a frontal gland which opens at the end. This frontal gland secretion can play many different roles. It can be predator repellent. It can act like a glue. Basically, those are used for protection of the colony. So, here the soldier would show physical aggression to protect the colony and here the soldier would show chemical aggression to protect the colony. So, this type of soldiers is only found in subfamily Nasuti Termitini. The third type is the Nasutoid soldiers. Okay, Here they are found in Rhino Termitini in which the mandibles vary in size. So, you can see that there are mandibles like the mandibulate soldiers as well as they have a rostrum like the Nasuti Termitini soldiers or Nasute soldiers. So, this snout is made of the fronds, clypeus and labrum. So, this is a modification of fused fronds, clypeus and labrum and these are as usual the mandibules, mandibles. So, when you see a rostrum as well as the mandibles, these are nasutoid soldiers and they are found in family Rhinotermitidae. There is another type of soldiers which are known as the phragmotic soldiers and they are found in family Calotermitidae. Here the mandibles are short but the head is very strongly sclerotized and it attains a plug like structure and they are used to block the nest openings from the entry of predators. Okay, So, these are known as the phragmotic soldiers. So, we have seen four types of soldiers. First one is mandibulate type of soldier where there is extension of mandibles. Second is nasute soldiers where there is a rostrum with chemical aggression to show and they have a frontal gland which opens at the tip of the rostrum. Then we have nasutoid soldiers where we see both the rostrum as well as the mandibles and then we have phragmotic soldiers where the head is strongly sclerotized and attains a plug like structure and they have short mandibles. These soldiers are used to block the colony entrance so that predators cannot enter. Now let's go into the economic importance of termites. 
termites have a very important ecological role to play because they are very important decomposers they feed on rotting wood or rotting uh, vegetation and they decompose that so as decomposers they have very important ecological role to play but they also have economic role to play because they damage the human crops they are they can be very important pests of uh, agriculture crops like wheat groundnuts etc okay coconut etc so they also spoil the wooden structures wooden homes wooden furnitures as well as the trees so as pests as pests they pose a huge economic uh, damage to human commodities but as ecological uh, composers they also help in keeping a balance in the uh, ecosystem so we are going to stop here hope you like this video please come back for my next video where i will be discussing the endopterygoat orders like hymenoptera lepidoptera and uh, coleoptera